Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, depending on when you're uh, listening to this presentation. My name is Victor, and I'm going to be your anchor for this training. So this is the Cisco Cyber Security Essentials training. Uh, we're going to be looking at, uh, we looked at quite a number of things. Uh, we're going to be looking at module three, chapter three, protecting your data and privacy. So uh, in module one, we looked at uh, what makes us uh, vulnerable, our personal data, in module two, we looked at attacks, different types of attacks, uh, what malware is. In module three, we're going to be looking at how do we protect our data and how do we ensure privacy. Okay, so we're going to be looking at protecting your data, safeguarding your online privacy. So in protecting your data, what are some of the things you need to do if you want to make sure that you have a secured IT infrastructure, you have a secured system? So this is a very foundational course. So if you want to get into cybersecurity, these are the things that you should be aware of. These are the things you should know um, from the word go. Firewall. So you want to make sure that you have your firewalls on. Uh, firewall protects your, either your website. For websites, we call them WAF, Web Application Firewall. Uh, we also have those that you can apply to your network. We have those you can apply also to your PCs, right? Then we have antivirus and anti-spyware. So any anti-malware will suffice. The goal is that you want to make sure that you have something that is active and something that is updated and uh, uh, a premium version. So if you're not using a premium version, you want to make sure that you are, you are having uh, a multi-layered defense. So when we say multi-layered defense in cybersecurity, we're trying to say you are ensuring defense, but using different methods. For instance, if I use uh, a anti-malware, maybe it's a free version, and I implement access control, and I implement CCTV cameras, and I implement just one, two, three, four checks. So you call that defense in depth. When you are having multi layers of security, that can um, make it possible that you don't go premium all the way. And of course, you want to make sure that you keep the software up to date. Another thing is your operating system and your browser. Because the more recent, ask yourself, why do you need to update your browsers, your operating system? Because there are vulnerabilities, there are patches that needs to be done. So make sure that it's up to date. Then of course, protect all of your devices. Uh, either you're passwording them or you're encrypting the data in them. For instance, hard disks these days, either on your PC, or on your, on your whatever type of machine you use, it's possible for you to encrypt them. Then only store necessary information, only store what needs to be stored. Then if you're using IoT devices, IoT is Internet of Things. Uh, look at IoT as you using technology over the internet. So things, so it can be a car, it can be a, it can be a gate, it can be um, an AC, it can be a device, it can be a weather monitoring gadget or whatever. It can be your wristwatch, it can be anything, provided you can monitor, provided you can use, provided you can control that thing over the internet, you call it internet of things. So uh, wireless networks, right? So how do you ensure that your, your what's it called? Your, your network is uh, safe. You want to, change any preset SSID or default administrator. Some people buy routers, buy devices, and they leave everything at its default. If you go online, there are quite a lot of uh, uh, websites that have uh, a database uh, details of devices and their default username and password. So people can easily search out this stuff by just knowing the name of your device. So you want to make sure that most of these presets, device name and the rest, you change them. Uh, so you want to, if it's possible, you want to disable uh, SSID broadcast. They want to uh, make sure that you're using WPA2. You don't want to be using web. You don't want to be using WPA. In the WhatsApp group uh, during the training, I, I made mention the difference between WP, web, WPA, and WPA2. So understand that for most of these uh, encryption uh, methods, they have your flaws. So you want to make sure that you are using several defense techniques to uh, ensure that you have a safe environment. Then 
one caution when it comes to wifey hotspots is that don't do things that are uh, that it's possible that people are going to be scanning through uh, the network you are using. You might need to use, use a VPN. You might need to use an anonymizer. Then, of course, turn off your Bluetooth when not in use. Have unique passwords. Having unique passwords is one way that you could. So the longer, the more uh, tricky the password is, the more combination, the better the password, right? So you don't want to have a password that is very easy for somebody to hack through, especially for dictionary attacks as, uh, or brute force attack. So you want to make sure that it's more than 10. You com combining uh, different small letter case or small case, small case, a a big case, and uh, just say alphanumeric with some special characters. You want to make sure that you have all of that in your password. So it makes it more difficult for it to be hacked. Okay, so that same thing. So there's a lab uh, that has to do with how do you create strong passwords? So at the end of the course, I'll release the sheet for the lab and walk you through the lab. Encrypting your data. So what's encryption? So uh, in cryptography, we normally say ciphertext and plain text. So you have plain text, A, B, C, D. So depending on the algorithm, you cannot get the ciphertext, right? So Encryption is the process of converting the information into a form that an unauthorized party cannot read. You could look up the uh, cryptography uh, module in the Cisco Cyber Ops, or later on in this course, I'm going to record a, uh, a module uh, that has to do with just cryptography. Uh, so if you need more uh, video on that, if you need more explanation on cryptography, uh, you could always indicate in the text or rather in the comment uh, section. So there are several algorithms. When we do digital forensic, when we do use some of the tools, we'll see that you have different algorithms. It can be AES, it can be SHA, it can be uh, a hashing methodology like uh, uh, hash, uh, MD4, MD5, and the rest. So all of these are ways you could just tweak the text a bit so that if you are not the party that is meant to receive that, then you cannot have access to that data. So you have the symmetric key and asymmetric key and all of that. So you need to also back up your data. Backing up your data is very important. So it prevents loss. Uh, you want to either use CDs, thumb drives, tapes, or you could go online. Uh, Google have their uh, backup services with um, less than, um, You want to make sure that you have your data and that data is uh, backed up, right? Also, you want to, if you don't want to use Google, you want to use uh, AWS. So AWS have uh, backup services. You could explore that. I'm an advocate of uh, AWS, Amazon services. But if you want to be simplistic, uh, Google is slightly easier for you to use if you're just starting up in cloud computing. So there is a lab here, same thing. We're going to handle this uh, separate at the end of the class. So deleting your data permanently. So the question is, because you don't want people to get back to data, you don't want to get people to get back to data that you already have. So it can be payroll, it can be personal data, it can be intellectual property. You want to make sure that you, you trash right you securely delete them so that people don't have access to that so there's another lab here who owns your data like i said earlier on i'm just trying to go through the theoretical aspect of the training so uh once i'm done with that i can now supply the labs a uh, document in the either the telegram or the whatsapp group safeguarding your online privacy okay so you want to use uh so Remember when we looked at the five elements of information security, we talked about confidentiality, integrity, um, confidentiality, integrity, and uh, availability. Then we talked about authentication, authenticity, 
and non-reputation. So in authenticity, you're trying to authenticate, you're trying to be double sure that somebody is who he or she says uh, the person is. So there are several ways you can do that. You could use uh, passwords, you could use uh, physical objects, you could use biometric scans. All of these are just you trying to do authentication. So there's first level authentication, second level authentication, third level authentication. At times we say what you have. What you have uh, people can use to make authentication is typically maybe your password, right? Your password. Uh, another way you could authenticate is your location. It can be the IP address. There are some systems, there are some servers that you cannot have access to if your IP address is not a particular IP address. So that particular environment is being bound to a particular IP address. So once you're trying to access from a different place, you cannot have access to that. So it can be who you are, right? It can be your 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 iris, your 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 fingerprint. It can be all of your biometric details. So you have different um, authentication standards like the Art uh, 2.0. So in social media, we normally say the more information you share. The more information you share, the more people, the more details people have about you, right? So you want to limit that because if you're sharing uh, details of all the places you are, all the places you've been, you're tagging, tagging your friends, you're tagging your relatives, you're tagging, tagging your relations and the rest. When people go on social media to harvest information, to do social engineering, to do reconnaissance and footprinting, they can get all of those information. Okay, so of course, email, web browser privacy. In the WhatsApp group, I'm going to be sharing a small tool that you can use to uh, uh, kind of pick up uh, passwords within browser or within the system. So you want to be very careful how you save passwords or how you keep up passwords. So there's another lab, uh, discover your own risk on online behavior. So. Uh, it's more or less a research. I'm going to drop that also that lab in the uh, WhatsApp group or Telegram group for discussions. So if you have questions with these labs, I'm also considering them on the channel later on. Uh, so do well to ask questions. Okay, that's all for module three. See you in module uh, four. So if you've not uh, subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that and share to uh, tech enthusiasts trying to venture into cybersecurity.